All right, so 3.6 part two. So we're continuing with what we've been doing. So this ties into part one. We're gonna graph the system of quadratic inequalities. So here we just have two graphs in one. So it's the same thing as part one. We just have two graphs that are gonna go together and then we just only care about the overlapping part. So first I'm gonna graph the first equation. So y is less than negative x squared plus three. So where do I begin to graph this? What? I have to find the vertex. How would I find the vertex? Awesome, we can always do negative b over 2a when it's in standard form. What is my b? Zero. zero. We don't have an x term in there, so b would be zero. a is negative one, so this would be negative zero over two times negative one. What happens when zero is on top? It's just zero. It's just zero. So for my vertex, the first number is zero. How would I find the second number? I plug in the zero. Plug in the zero. Perfect. So I plug it into the x. So it would be zero squared, negative zero squared plus three, which is just three. So we plugged it in. So my vertex is zero comma three. So I'm gonna stay at zero and go up three. So that is the first point on my graph. How can I find another point? Perfect. I can plug in the number close to my axis of symmetry. What is my axis of symmetry? X equals zero. It's always the first number. So what's a number close to zero? One. So to find another point, we're gonna plug in a number. Usually we want it to be close to the axis of symmetry. So let's plug in one. So we have negative one squared plus three. What would I have to do first here? Square the one. So one squared is still just one, but it's negative on the outside. So negative one plus three, which would be what? Two. So I plugged in one, bless you, and got two. So that's another point on my graph. I'm going to go to the right one and up two. Do I know where another point on my graph is going to be? Negative one. Negative one, two. Same thing on the opposite side because my axis of symmetry acts as a mirror. So if I have one point, I'm going to have that same point on the other side. All right, now let's see if we can remember what we did in part one. If it's just a less than sign, what does that tell me my parabola is going to be? Solid or dotted? Dotted. If it is less than or greater than, it's a dotted line. If it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, it's a solid line. So here, because it's just less than, I have a dotted line. Now we're not done with our first equation here. What am I missing? The shading. The shading. How can I figure out where I'm gonna shade? Plug in any point that's inside the parabola. We like to plug in zero, zero. So if that's inside the parabola, that'll always work. So let's plug in zero, zero. So to shade, we're gonna test zero, zero. So you plug in zero for X and zero for Y. So if zero is less than negative, X, negative zero squared plus three, so zero is less than three. Is this true? Yeah, so am I gonna shade inside my parabola or outside? Inside the parabola.
So I did the first one. Now I'm going to do the second inequality. But it's going to go on the same graph. So what do I need to find first to graph this? The vertex. So I'm just going to rewrite it down here so I have a little bit more room. So y is greater than or less than x squared plus 2x minus 3. So I have a, b, and c. What's the formula I use to find the vertex? Negative b over 2a. So this would be negative 2 over 2 times 1 which would be negative 2 over 2, which simplifies to what? Negative 1. So what's the first number in my vertex? Negative 1. How do I find the second number? Plug it in. So I'm going to plug it into the equation here. I have 1 squared, negative 1 squared, sorry plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3. Make sure you follow your order of operations. You have to do negative 1 squared, which turns into positive 1. 2 times negative 1 would be negative 2 minus 3. 1 minus 2 would be negative 1, and negative 1 minus 3 is what? Negative 4. So now I can plot my vertex at negative 1, negative 4. So I'm going to go to the left to negative 1, down 4. Put a point there. Now remember, this is in standard form. How do I know where I have another point on my graph? The y-intercept, perfect. C tells me my y-intercept. So I'm going to have a point on the y-axis at negative 3. Once I have two points, do I know where my third point's going to be? I already have one, negative 1, negative 4. That's my vertex. So my axis of symmetry would go right down the middle of my vertex. Perfect. Negative 2 comma negative 3. So the same thing on the opposite side of my axis of symmetry. So that, that's okay. Now, is this graph going to have a solid parabola or a dotted parabola? Solid. Because it is greater than or equal to, it is solid. So I can draw my solid parabola there. Now what do I need to do next? Plug in a point and see where I'm going to shade. So I have to shade next. What's a point that I could test? Zero, zero. Zero, zero is inside my parabola, so I can test that and see if it works. So I'm going to plug in 0 for x and 0 for y. So 0 is greater than or equal to 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 3. So 0 is greater than or equal to negative 3. Is this true? Yeah. So where am I going to shade inside my parabola or outside? Inside the parabola. So now the very last step that we have to do here is we only care about the overlapping parts. So what overlaps from the blue shaded and the green shaded. So I can erase everything else. Not everything because we want to keep our graph there, but everything else that was shaded. So we only care about the overlapping shaded parts.
So that would be my answer. So for this one, we're doing the same thing. We just take each of our inequalities here and just graph them separately. So I'm going to work with the first one. Y is less than or equal to negative x squared. So let's start with the vertex. How would I find the vertex here? What do I do to find the vertex? Perfect. It's 0, 0. We can do negative b over 2a. And what's my b? 0. And then we, when we plug in 0, I would get 0 again. So my vertex is at 0, 0. How can I find another point? What's close to 0? So let's plug in 1. Bless you. So we're going to plug in to find another point. So we said we're going to plug in 1. So I have negative 1 squared. So first I have to do 1 squared, which is just 1. But that negative is on the outside, so it turns into negative 1. So when I plugged in 1, I got negative 1. So I'm going to go to the right one and down 1. Once I have two points, do I know where the third point is going to be? Where? Negative 1, negative 1. Same thing on the other side of my vertex. So be careful because that vertex is the middle. So it's going to be the same thing on the other side. Now, is my graph going to be a solid parabola or a dotted parabola? Solid. Because we have that less than or equal to, that equal to means it's going to be solid. Now, what's the last step we need for this parabola before we move on? What do we have to do? Plug in a point inside. We have to shade it. We have to figure out if we're going to shade inside or outside. So what's a point inside my parabola? Just be careful that you're not picking a point on the parabola. So I could pick like this point here. What would that point be? What coordinate? Zero, comma, negative one. Perfect. So I'm going to plug in zero for x and negative one for y. So I would have negative one is less than or equal to negative zero squared. So negative one is less than or equal to zero. Is this true? Yes negative number is less than zero. So it is true. So where am I going to shade? Inside. Since it's true, we shade on the inside. All right, let's move on to our second one. So my second equation is y is greater than x squared minus 3. So I just rewrote it down at the bottom. What's the first thing I want to find to graph this? My vertex. How can I find my vertex? <coughs> awesome. 0, comma, negative 3. You can use your negative b over 2a, which would give you 0 because b is 0, or you can... Consider this in vertex form, what you're adding inside, what you're adding outside. We're not adding anything inside. 
So my x would be 0. So I'm going to plot that point, stay at 0, go down 3. Now how can I find another point on my graph? Plug in something close to my axis symmetry, which your axis symmetry is zero. So what's a number close to zero? One. So we're going to plug in one to find another point. So I'm going to plug in one. So I have one squared minus three. One squared is one. And one minus three is negative two. So my second point on my graph is one comma negative two. So I go to the right one, down two. Do I know where my third point's gonna be? Negative one, negative two, perfect. Same thing on the opposite side. So if you have a point to the right, of your vertex, you're gonna have that same point to the left. Now, is my parabola gonna be a solid line or a dotted line? Dotted line, how did we know that? Because it's just greater than, so this told me it was gonna be a dotted parabola. So I'm gonna draw my dotted parabola there. Now, what do I have to do next? Shade. How can I figure out where I'm going to shade? Pick a point inside the parabola. What's a point inside our parabola? Zero, zero. So I'm going to plug in zero for x and zero for y. So zero is greater than zero squared minus three. Zero is greater than negative three. Is this true? Yes. So am I going to shade inside my parabola or outside? Inside. Now am I done? What's the last thing I have to do? Keep just the overlapping part. So I'm going to erase everything else that's not overlapping. So I only care about the overlapping part. That would be our graph. So next, we are going to be solving a quadratic inequality algebraically. So we are not graphing these, we are just solving. So I have x squared minus 3x minus 4 is less than 0. How do I solve something with an x squared and an x? I factor it. Do I have two factors of negative 4 that add to negative 3? Yes. What are they? Negative 4 and positive 1. So we factor this. We solve it as if it was equal to 0. We'll deal with the inequality later. We're just going to pretend that this is equal to 0. We solve it just like normal. So I factor it. It factors into x minus 4 and x plus 1 equals 0. What do I have to do next? Equal them both to zero. So we can't just factor it. We got to solve it. So x minus four is equal to zero and x plus one is equal to zero. So x is equal to what? Four and negative one. Perfect. So once we solve it, these are key numbers. But because it's an inequality, it's going to be more than just those two numbers. But we're going to put those two numbers on a number line. So I have negative 1 and 4. Why do you think I put the negative 1 on the left? 
because the smaller numbers go on the left. So because it's negative, we write that one first. So it's always small to large. Now, being an inequality, it's either going to be something outside of these two key numbers or it's going to be something inside these two numbers. So we have to test where it's going to be. So I need to plug in numbers other than these two key numbers to figure out where my answer is going to be. So what's something smaller than negative 1? Negative 2. So let's plug in negative 2 into our equation here. So I'm going to plug it into all the x's. So negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 minus 4 is less than 0. So we got to test this and see if it is true. So negative 2 squared would be 4. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6 minus 4. So this would be 6 is less than 0. Is this true? No, not true. So I'm going to put an x over here because numbers less than negative 1 don't work. You could have tested negative 3, negative 1 and a half, anything smaller than negative 1, and it's not going to work. Now let's test something in the middle. So in between negative 1 and 4, what's a number in between negative 1 and 4? What do you think the easiest number in between negative 1? 0. Let's test 0. You could test anything in between. It'll work, but 0 is just going to be the easiest one to work with. So we have 0 squared minus 3 times 0 minus 4 is less than 0. So negative 4 is less than 0. Is this true? Yes. So this works. So in between here works. All the numbers in between work. And then let's just test a number larger than 4 also. What's a number larger than 4? 5. So 5 squared minus 3 times 5 minus 4 is less than 0. 25 minus 15 minus 4 is less than 0. We get 6. Is 6 less than 0? No, so that doesn't work. So the only numbers that work are in between negative 1 and 4. So how we would write our answer is negative 1 is less than x, and it's less than 4. So x is in between negative 1 and 4. So it has to be, x is going to be some number greater than negative 1 and some number less than 4. So you have to write it as an inequality like this. And it's less than because we started with just a less than. If we started with a less than or equal to, we would put less than or equal to in our answer also. All right. So let's look at our next example. What's the first thing I have to do to solve? Factor. Do I have two factors of 9 that add to 10? 9 and 1. So x plus 9 and x plus 1 is equal to 0. What do I need to do next? Equal them both to 0. So x plus 9 is equal to 0, and x plus 1 is equal to 0. So what is x equal? Negative 9 and negative 1. So these are key numbers. I'm going to put them on a number line. Which one's going to go first on the left? Negative 9. That one's smaller. So negative 9, negative 1. Now I need to figure out if it's going to be true in between, bless you, or outside. So I'm going to test numbers. What's a number smaller than negative 9? Negative 10. Negative 10. So let's plug in negative 10 into the x's in our equation here. So negative 10 squared plus 10 times negative 10 plus 9 is less than 0. Negative 10 squared would be what? 100. 
and then 10 times negative 10, negative 100 plus 9. So 100 minus 100 just cancels. So 9 is less than 0. Is this true? No. Not true. So I'm going to put in a big X on the left. Doesn't work. Yes. So let's test a number in between negative 9 and negative 1. What's a number in between? Zero. Is 0 in between? Negative 7. Negative 7, sure. So let's test negative 7. Negative 7 squared plus 10 times negative 7 plus 9 is less than 0. I probably would have picked something like negative 2 just to be a smaller number, but negative 7 works. So negative 7 squared would be 49, minus 70 plus 9 is less than 0. What is 49 minus 70? Positive or negative? Negative 21. What's negative 21 plus 9? Negative 12. So is negative 12 less than 0? Yeah. yeah, so this works. So in between works. And then if we would have checked a number that's bigger than negative 1, let's say 0, that would not have worked. I'll show you. Yes. Yes. All right. So how would I write my answer? So is negative 9 less than or greater than x? Negative 9 is going to be less than, because x has to be some number that's bigger than negative 9, but it's also going to be less than negative 1. So we would write it like this. So it's like two inequalities in one. So negative 9 is less than x, but x is less than negative 1. All right, with the last one, what do you think I have to do first? Awesome. Move the 10. Remember, if we're going to factor, I have to have it be equal to 0 in order to factor. So I'm going to do what to the 10? Add 10 to move it to the other side. So 3x squared minus 13x plus 10 is greater than 0. How do I factor this? Perfect. Since we start with a number that's not 1, I have to multiply the first times the last. So 3 times 10 would be 30. What are two factors of 30 that add to negative 13? Negative 10 and negative 3. Awesome. So in my parentheses here, I have x minus 10 and x minus 3. What do I have to remember to do? Before I set them equal to 0. Since we started by multiplying the 3, I have to remember to divide both of these numbers by 3. Divide it if you can, but if you cannot, just move it in front of the x. So it would be 3x minus 10. And x, what is 3 divided by 3? 1. So x minus 1. Now what can I do? Set them both equal to 0. So 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. x minus 1 is equal to 0. 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. What do I need to do first to solve? Add the 10. So 3x is equal to 10. And then what should I do? Divide by 3. So x is equal to 10 over 3. And we can just leave it as a improper fraction. That's fine. And then for the second one, what is x equal? 1. So now when I put those on a number line, which number is smaller, 1 or 10 over 3? 
if I change 10 over 3 into a mixed fraction, a mixed number, how would I do that? I divide 10 by 3. How many times does 3 go into 10? Three. At least 3. So it's like 3 point something. So let me ask again, which number is smaller? 1. So 1, and then I would say 10 over 3 here. So always to test and see where you would put it on a number line, you can change it to be a mixed number if you don't have to give me the mixed number but know about what that number is close to an approximation of that number all right so now we can test in between and outside let's test outside first what's a number smaller than one zero so let's plug in zero so you can either plug it into the original here or plug it into this one here, they're the same. All we did was move the 10. I'm going to plug it into the original. So this would be 3 times 0 squared minus 13 times 0 is greater than negative 10. What's 3 times 0 squared minus 13 times 0? Zero? 0. So 0 is greater than negative 10. Is this true? Yeah. Yes. So outside works. We're just going to trust that we did our math right and inside does not work. Let's test a number that's greater than 10 over 3 just to double check that the outside is what works. What's a number that's greater than 10 over 3? 4. 4, perfect. Because we said 10 over 3 was about 3 point something. So a number bigger than that would be 4. So let's plug in 4. I have 3 times 4 squared minus 13 times 4 is greater than negative 10. 4 squared is 16. 16 times 3 is what? 48. And what is 13 times 4? 52. And 40 minus 52. Negative 4. Is negative 4 greater than negative 10? Yes. So outside works here too. So now our answer is going to have our key numbers, 1 and 10 thirds and x. We said it's outside, so it's everything smaller than 1. So is 1 going to be greater than x or less than x? 1 is the highest number that x could be, so 1 is greater. x has to be something smaller. We said x could be 0, 0 worked. Is 1 greater than 0? Yeah, so we'd put greater than. And then for the other part, x can be anything bigger than 10 thirds. So is x going to be greater than 10 thirds? Yeah, so we would put another greater than sign. And then it's just greater than because our question just had greater than. But if it had greater than or equal to, we would have to put that equal to also in our answer. So this would be our answer.